Hello, brothers and sisters, and welcome to the shabby experience that is Unexplored 2, which has to be the most unique roguelike I've ever played. Every mo- well, pretty much every roguelike I've played is just huge emphasis on combat, getting good, being overgeared, and just slaying the world. Whereas this one, this is about melding into the world, learning all of its secrets, being in an explorer and an adventurer, and a combat specialist. Lastly, you have some proficiencies, but not a lot, and combat is generally unrewarding. So I'm going to start a new game. I played a couple just to, uh, you know, just test it out, see what death looked like in this game. So I'm excited to really see how this goes. We'll do a standard game, and it just means that these, um, this is like the way the game devs intended it to be played. We'll do a shabby do seed. So if you want to play the same seed as me, there it is. And we'll do a new character. So you can unlock some of the classes. I haven't unlocked anything yet because we barely played. But we've got the Rafi here, loyal followers of Raf. Uh, I'll be a Groose because they're cool little, like, flamingo dudes. My background is locked right now because this is all that's available based off of our culture. Backgrounds is Disciple. And that means this will give us some skills and what the possibility of these skills can be. So then we'll go to the hope traits. So hope traits might be lost during the adventure, starting with the highest hope trait, which means top to bottom, literally. So right here, we've got vitality locked in, which is a recover health from eating food, which is fantastic. Uh, I'm going to do plus one redraw for lore fortune tests. So lore fortune tests are um, acts of study to learn something in a test so that you can gain either knowledge of a, of a place, of an item, so that you can have somewhere to explore. Uh, natural charm is social, it's the same thing, that's just from talking to people. This would be like finding like a stone out somewhere. And, um, nope. Heightened senses, easier to spot things. I think I'm gonna do heightened senses, easier to spot things. So now we get four chosen skills. The first one is an extra damage from single-handed melee weapons. And then I think I wanna do ignore one lost on a journey. So as you walk around certain uh, negative things or positive things can happen. One of them is lost, which means you lose your way. So having this, I can ignore one on my journey at least. I'm going to go with barter, better deals when trading goods. And then I think I'm going to go with pack rat so that the encumbrance of each non-combat item is reduced by one, which we'll get into the equipment in a bit. And now we get our chosen random equipment. So this is different than last time. So it is a bit random. Um, this is five damage with a force back that's five these are all well made i think i'm gonna go with disable the shield and force back this is force back ignore armor stunning and force back i think i'll keep the axe i'll take these with me or is it not gonna let me no it's not gonna let me i only get to choose one okay so how this inventory management system works, which is amazing, by the way, is that you have encumbrance here. So you can see this, that I have two encumbrance from this on, so I lose two additional inventory slots. And then this has an encumbrance of three because it's actually a really bad shield. It's extra bulky, so it adds even more encumbrance. So not only does it take up its own slot, but it adds extra encumbrance, so it removes away. So there's no like, managing your inventory on individual weights or anything because then there are small items in the game like potions and rings and gems that you can carry unlimited of in a separate inventory because they're small so you shouldn't be penalized for having small things no more of this i picked up a ring off the ground and i'm over encumbered which is i always hated that it made no sense in games like i don't care how heavy i am if i pick up a, a ring that's not what's gonna break my back and make me exhausted it's just not Maybe bending over will, but you know, that's a different story. So now it, you saw I said it was building the world. The world are randomly generated. And which makes it nice because it is a road like obviously. Now you've obviously got the same like races everywhere, but the game itself will be different and how you in the quest you do get will be different as well. So you see it said I recovered a staff. The whole point of this is to destroy this staff. Okay. So we're here. Let me show you the map. It's uh, pretty big. So this is what's available right now. And then there becomes more with obviously the game not being in a demo, right? So you can see on the map, I've got this place, which is Haven, which is just the main city of the Rafi, which is our race. 
And then we've got the Temple of Jetbeak, which is kind of where we're heading to so we can uncover clues for our main objective, which is destroying the staff. Now you can see here, there's nothing else on the map, right? How you find more objective items like that on the map or lore locations or just exquisite items to discover is by talking to the people. So like if you come in here and talk to the envoy, look, location, Lev has been found. So if I open my map real quick, we can see here, here's Lev now, it wasn't there. This is where the wolf main live. So it's just a nice capital city you learn about. Again, Rondero. So these envoys are race envoys. So when you talk to them, you learn where their main cities are. And then if we go inside here, this is the inn. What you can do here is sleep, rest off your weary travels, heal yourself. So look, if you're looking, so we got a mountain pass. If you're looking to cross the mountains of Rolfenberg and mountains, you should try mountain pass. So now if I want to get across there, I know I can via this direction, probably get over there perhaps. So this is what you have to do. So I'm going to go around. We're going to go talk to people. We gain knowledge on a borrow right here. So an ancient hero was buried in a borrow along with all their valuables. So maybe we'll make our way that way. That sounds like a pretty fun quest to take up today. Talk to the innkeeper. So like I can stay the night. I can trade with him to get some, some extra food and whatnot. What are you doing running around? Just nods at me. Very well. Nothing going on in here. So this is the basis. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to go around town, talk to people. And if one of those fortune tests come up, like I told you before, I'll show you what that is so we can go through it together. Here's our first fortune test. So natural charm plus one. That's part of our perks. Excuse me. I have somewhere else to be urgency, but I can just keep talking to them. So you mentioned that it would be so informative. But I'd share their experience and share yours. Makes sense, right? So you can see here, it takes, this is a pool of options that can happen here. And you can see I pulled a failure. Now, because of my perk for being a social fortune, I get a free redraw. So I can get another one. And now you can see I can push by luck to add a check mark, which is a success. Failure, success. This right, not that right there, but with a check mark. Or you can spend a currency called sparks to also draw again. So by doing that, you would add a negative or a failure to the pool and cost five sparks. Sparks can be found around the world. See, look, and if I do that, and I got the success, so that was great. So with this, ah, friendly gesture on your part, you've piqued my curiosity. So now you see he told me some stuff, knowledge confirmed. Be very careful when you tread in Rollersterfolt. Recently, I ran across a giant purple tree. Later, I heard it was the spirit Dorn. I guess I'm lucky to not be turned into fodder for the fauna of Rollersterfolt. So we can see here. Now I've got this location on the map, and I know that Dorn is here. So the first valley is perfected by a dense forest of snap trees. Dorn, the spirit that controls him, is located on a glade. Traveling to Dorn might allow me to deal with the forest in one way or another. So some sort of objective. I don't know about it yet. But I've gained some further knowledge on it. So this could be like a two or at least a multi-part kind of knowledge that I have to gain as I travel across this world. So what else we have here? We have up here. This is the temple. The vault is over here. I want to go check out the vault real quick. Um, this is where you can store some legacy items and they can be saved between runs. The, the, the game will tell you if they're legacy or not, but they'll be in here. I have none. We obviously made this character just now. But in here, you can find some items to start you off with. So here, I've got a Mystic's Chanting Beads. That's actually pretty cool. Revealed the time and use. I'll put that on. I'll take this potion. And also, I'm going to take all of these with me because I can either use them or trade them now for some good stuff. And then back here is a forge. This is how we can enchant our weapons. But we got to find stuff called sigils. So I want to take a look at these real quick. So our mace is just normal five and eight damage this is also five and eight damage but it's light so it has minus one encumbrance and storm forged first flow and sky sigils counts double plus two damage when the winds are strong so actually i'm going to equip this because that's actually pretty decent and we'll get rid of that spear but also we've got a dagger balanced in witch wood so balance means it gets a minus cooldown which would first root sig sigil and again these are the enchantments Counts double, ignores soft armor. Normal attack is four, throne is six, and ignores soft armor. I am going to keep that, and actually, we'll go with a double dagger build. So we'll keep those, and I'll get rid of the... I might. I need to get rid of that shield because it's just awful, right? 
But let me show you too, uh, small items. These are the small items, they don't count towards your bulk, which is amazing. Absolutely amazing. We also have the temple here, which has a library we, where we can turn in scriptures and books we find along the way to gain knowledge. We can use that knowledge to attain more information from the, the temple. You can also donate some food in there to get a um, to get a little buff from the gods. Ooh, see, do you like mushrooms? See, he talked to me, so it's not uncommon to find edible mushrooms in caves. If you are in a pinch, it might be worth your while to look for them, but know the dark places are rarely abandoned. So he's just giving us some information. Talk to this guy. Again, just some kind of lore. It doesn't give us locations. Great to see you. He's just going to tell us <clears throat> about the waygate system here. So these are called serpent gates. We need to find something called the sky sigil before we can activate it. I don't know what happens with it, but, you know, that's what he said. But let's go on an adventure now. We've learned about some things. And I want to see, were there any traders here at the front? There is a trader here. Hello. So what do you have? Because I want to get rid of some stuff and I want to gain some stuff. So I could get this identify item. And maybe I could get rid of this mace. Okay, that's, it's a little bit small. But I can also give him more. I could do a passage. I don't want to do that. What is this? A dark stone ring? Improves my ability to remain hidden. That's actually pretty neat. A water skin? I might... It's... It's, it's not a bad idea. Um, a lantern. And then we've got another well-made dagger. And then that's a short sword. So if I give him a little something else... Like, actually, if I just... This is too little. It's more than they want. I can give him my torch. I'll do that. Take that. So I've... It's now been identified as lucky. So protect against negative status effects once. So I will equip that. That's actually pretty nice. Negative status effects can really ruin a run there. And now you can see he's selling that. Everything else is pretty fine. I don't really think a spirit pearl... When camping, use to fully recharge a magical item. That's pretty cool. Um, I don't really think I care about much else, but I'd rather get rid of my bulk in here before we go exploring. So if I grab like these small little trade items, they're worth a little bit of value. Um, maybe I can get rid of... Actually, I don't need to get rid of any of these. I am going to keep all those on me. All right, cool. That's good stuff. I'll talk to you real quick. So my word, if I must shall repeat myself, be very careful when you tread in Rallist or Holt. Recently, I ran across a giant purple tree. Heard the spirit door. Oh, is that the, it's the same guy. Did he tell me anything more? No, that was just the same guy. They all look the same. These raft people. All right, so now you can see we've got our objectives here. Maybe we'll head. I don't know if we can get over here, but we can try. Or we can head. We don't have anything known out here yet. We don't have a lot of stuff available. We can check this out. Let's head over there. Oh, that's outside the demo region. Okay, I guess I can't head over there. All right, I'm going to go back in town. I'm going to go find us something to do. All right, I went and talked to the lore keeper inside the temple and whatnot. We got some new stuff to do. So we can see here an arcane rift has appeared in a hostile force causing trouble. We've got... There's nothing there. We've got here a large set of ancient Marang texts is hidden in the keep, which is actually really nice. And we could probably go check out the capital. So why don't we head up here? So to do that, we got to go through this clifftop ruin. So we'll head in this direction. We can see nothing exciting has really happened to us. So now we've got all this stuff. We've actually got a bar over here. And a cavern. Which is weird how it's outside the demo area. Like, why am I so close to the demo area? I never had that happen. I explored a lot in my first run. So, pretty bad luck, I guess. Um, why don't we go check out this bar over here? Kobolds? Uh, it doesn't really say there's much in there, so why don't we keep going? We'll go towards this keep. So it said there's cold along the way and potential hostile forces, so we've encountered the hostile forces. So it's going to force us into the area. So we got these ugly little serpent things. Now, like I was saying before, combat, not advisable. They can't, certain things can drop stuff, but it's not always good stuff, right? So now I'm wet and cold, which is not a good thing, or potentially cold. And so you can see here, like, these guys are, like, usually a one-hit, so it's not bad. So, like, if you get up on them, you can get them. The combat is deliberately s slow. See, he hit me, and I didn't even notice it. It's deliberately meant to be slow and uh, unfulfilling, in my opinion. Uh, but it's intentional. Ouch. Ah. 
I'm like, I sometimes I don't get the combat because I feel like I put my shield up in time and it still hurts me. I'm still figuring it out, but it's really slow. It's intentional. I don't like it. I think the combat is very, very bad, but I get how it's supposed to be. So once I feel like once I get a bit more used to it, I'll get more comfortable, but I still don't think I'm going to like it. So here we've got shelter and folk. I'm going to explore here because I do want to rest because I'm cold. I'm wet. So I want to sleep by the campfire to get rid of these kind of debuffs. And there's some people here, so maybe they'll tell me something too. So coming in here. Beautiful stuff. Gotta be careful. Even those rats will hurt you. Everything hurts you. Game's out to get you. Nothing really going on out here. I was trying to see if there's like anything special, but it doesn't really look like there's much going on here. I wonder what's over here? A little hidey hole? Reach inside. Seems dangerous, but I don't know what that does. I've seen those before. There's a little cave entrance here. That's interesting. I'm gonna ignore that for the moment. Oh, you know what? Is this where we... I think this is where I meant to go. Maybe this is where all these texts are gonna be. Potentially. Yeah. Unlock. Requires a copper key. I think I'm gonna find that over there. I remember doing this in the last one. But what I'm here for is this. I want to light this. Too much rain. That's unfortunate. It's raining, not snowing. I'm gonna climb down here. I don't know what's in here, but I guess I'm gonna find out. And that's what this game is. It's exploring, a little bit of combat. I don't like the combat, so I try and avoid it. It's clunky. And again, I know it's supposed to be that way, but like certain things just don't feel right. And you can't move the camera. Like, I don't know what's going on down here or if there's things there. Oh, get out of that. I do enjoy the art style too. It's very simple, but it's cute. It's nice. So like these here, these will attack you, but you can also use your staff to get those abilities. You can see I got rock strike there. So like while you're in those zones, you can also use the abilities, but like here is, uh, oh no, that one's not gonna do it. Where the other trees were, it would, but you get like uh, wild strike it's called and it shoots those roots out. You basically do the same thing that they do to you, but you can use that for like terrain alteration sometimes. Investigate. Broken, don't think, maybe f sufficient force to smash it open. I guess I don't have sufficient force. Reach inside, why not? Oh, I got a copper key, that was convenient. Didn't expect that. Nothing inside this chest. Carry down this way. I'm assuming I can't use this copper key here, right? Nope. So let's try hitting it. Nope. Didn't seem to work. I did piss off the spiders because I uh, hit their spider webs through the wall there. Okay, I was outside that circle. Why did that hurt me? My health is really low. I'm actually going to heal myself here. Oh, I can just get in here, I guess. Okay, I'm just going to... I don't know how friendly these spiders are. Don't want to find out. F around and find out, right? So by walking into these, I know I can sometimes find a spider silk. You can see here, harvest spider silk in the area. What's this? Oh, there we go. What's that? Oh, the rats are covered in it too. So now I can probably use that copper key in here. And now we found where all this lore is supposed to be, I believe. Yep, so we found a ring. And then we've got the map. So offer to the prime archivist in Haven or a lore seeker to gain a small amount of knowledge. And item map, item note info. Interesting. It doesn't seem to be a complete, but these go into small items. I guess I can't use it. I guess I got to give it to somebody. And then same thing, I can investigate these shelves. Nothing of interest. 
Take a book. So now I've got a book and it goes into here. So primordial times the four elders. So I can read that and learn a little bit of actual lore. And if I, I can probably turn that into the library and get some knowledge points as well. Get the wrong thing. Nothing. Nothing. These are empty. Take a scroll. Shadow Pact. Nothing. Let's see. Here. Used to summon a group of allied shades. That's pretty interesting. Killed the rat. To climb up these stairs here. Okay, so it, we... We knew up based off of the map lore that there was a forge here as well. So inside this chest is a, ooh, a legendary. Well made means it can be enchanted. Legendary, one free draw to social test. That's pretty cool. It's unidentified as well, so we got to use it. Uh, we've got another inlaid enchanted beaten silver. One less presence using sky magic. Okay. Moderate value. And we got a bunch of books here as well, which mostly went to the small inventory except for this one, which is apparently a big textbook. So lots gained here. We can go turn that in, gain knowledge, and gain more objectives to go search through. And this is like obviously like the starter quest, I guess you could say. So it's like it's a little less uh, dangerous. Like we saw some spiders, of course, but I've seen other dangerous items in here. What's this? Seems to have a magic presence. Camping in its vicinity will be safer. Okay. See, I can't light a fire here, but I could wait it out. Craft, I can learn a skill, but I don't want to rest here because of these debuffs that I would eventually get, so. Can I just, I'm assuming if I went down here, it'd just bring me back down into that catacombs we were just in, would it not? Just in a different spot. Yeah, it looked the same to me I'm not gonna bother I'm pretty sure it's the exact same I just got in through a different spot let's head back to town and turn on all this knowledge but yeah guys if you are loving this make sure you hit that like button down below it'll let me know if you want to see a little bit more in depth on this I wanted to just give you guys a little overview because I think it's really unique and interesting and it did require more talking because it's just quite in depth like Usually games like this that you would see, you would expect there to just be a combat system and go wacky, 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 when it's the exact opposite. It's more about building your character up, being an adept explorer, and rather than being an inept explorer and just being like a big burly boy, just smashing through everything. We're back in town. I went to the inn and I wanted to show you just kind of what the rest of the mechanics looked like before we went and turned this in. So because we completed some, you know, daring deed, we get to get a skill here. So we could get Guile for a redraw and applicable social, uh, repose with swords and quarterstaffs. I'm guessing we'll get some sort of counter or silent step. So I'm going to go with the Guile because that's pretty nice. And then here I can take some time and rest. So I got a shared meal here because he gives me a meal. And I'll just say I'll rest till morning and you know, I'll even just take the offered meal again just to top me off. Use the free mechanics to our advantage, right? And again, make sure you go talking to people because you can learn more. I think I just learned about like a well of life while I when I walked back in here. Which is great. So you can see all these people are my friends now. They kind of like me. They're like, oh, you know, you've been here. You're doing stuff. Let's enter the temple and let's go turn in all of these books. So this will gain us knowledge. And I can show you the this. So like if I pay tribute, right? Offer, offer way bread. So I get inspired. Which it protects a loss against the loss of hope and adds an in inspiration fortune to all tests. So, yep, he's just telling me, so these are the things that we kind of learned about here. That's where I got some more questies from. 
That's she's wild. the one that told me about the library, so we can nice. donate all these items. So exactly. confirm. Now watch. So we we're donating all these ancient tomes, the item map. So we got Rafi knowledge oh, plus twenty five. So if I do I learn secrets, I have thirty five knowledge points. And so if I learn about the Northern <laughs> Serpent Gate, restore the gate and a keep in there. <laughs> so now I know where to go to restore that. I can learn okay, another yeah, secret. Yeah. So the Southern Serpent yeah, Gate. Um, restore the Southern Serpent Gate and a keep in Rolson Flats. Yeah, well, and I'm assuming that. you're going to... There's some captivating leads. So Eastern yeah. Gate in the Wastelands. And then the next one, there's no secrets available. So that we got all those points. So now we've learned how to restore all the different gates. Maybe not necessarily how to, but where to go to do so. Um, I'm assuming like these are the three areas that our demo is in. So this is where we could go to get stuff done. We can't go out further because it's just the demo, of course. But yeah, that's how that works. Super interesting stuff. I like the way we get quests in this game. And I do enjoy just kind of like being a roguelike explorer and gaining goods and deeds in this sense. It's really fun. It's different. Let me know in the comments down below what you think of that. It's a nice little twist to the roguelike. Obviously, it's not your conventional roguelike. So I want to know what you all think down below. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well so you get back here for that sweet, shabby content. But all right, I want to show you one more thing before we go off, and that is death. What happens when you die? So... I wanted to test this too because I hadn't done it. I know if I walk around with my weapons, the townspeople don't really like it that much. People tell you to put your weapons away. I know it's the case when I walk into here. So like, put away your weapons and we might talk. It's like, I don't even know if they talk to you. But I can hit them. So now I've got aggressor. Let's see what happens here if we kill a townsfolk. All right, now we're hostile to the Rafi. Here, act it aggressively. Folk in this area will act accordingly. So they're just gonna, he's just gonna kind of leave. See, you can see those guards out there just said charge. I'm backing up because my shield was on cooldown. I'm gonna use a throne dagger here. Oh, it just missed. Got him. Suck it, nerd. So now I'm going to head out here and see what these guards are up to. Like, what's up, guys? I want I want us to die, but I want to put up a fight as well so we can see combat a bit. At my axe is now damaged. I don't know why these guys aren't attacking, though. They're just kind of retreating, which is really sad. There we go. I guess the merchant has the biggest balls here out of everybody. I don't want to kill the merchant. I want him to kill me. Okay, I guess not. Okay, well, you're dead now. Didn't get anything from him. This is what I mean by like combat's kind of like unrewarding. You don't get a lot of things when you kill people. Even the townspeople, apparently. Oh, he's going to attack me. Come on, finish me off. I want to show you guys what it looks like when you die in this game. It's pretty cool, honestly. The world... Because it is a roguelike, but what happens is they talk about the world being in, like, generations and things passing down to the next generation, which is why they're called legacy items. So even though it regenerates the world... Watch how they do it, and I bet you'll be a little surprised and intrigued by how this happens. So I've died, and that's how the Wayfarer was lost. The staff was returned to Raph's lore masters, but it wouldn't be for some years before it was picked up again. If I hit continue, so you can see I had a legacy item, this well-made legendary sword, so now it's automatically in the vaults for me. You don't have to put them in there yourselves. Legacy items automatically go in there upon death. And look, some years pass... Do I have to hit continue? I want to make sure. Okay. Bandits attacked and defeated that town. The Urgle attacked our main city up there. Bandits attacked over there and defeated them. That Black Note attack didn't look successful. The clan attacked some spiders. Those mysterious guys are moving. Imperials reinforced. Those were claimed by the red people. 
and that's how the map changes so some other objectives will change as well but like as you take stuff and leave stuff they disappear from these places forever so it leaves less when you do go through on a second playthrough i believe so it's really fun and interesting you can have random characters or just start a new character and be the progenit progenerator progenerator the progenitor you can be the next kin essentially that goes on this journey within the clan and you can take the legacy items from those who fell before you. But all right, everybody, brothers and sisters, I hope you all enjoyed this. I really did. I think it's nice and interesting. I wanted to give you a little peek at it and just kind of talk through it because it's a little different and I felt like this game deserved it. Hit that like button down below if you like this kind of swing. Make sure you comment as well. Let me know what you think about this. And as usual, everybody, I hope the rest of your day is not too shabby.